everybody. Uh, I just wanted to go live here uh, for just a little bit to talk about some things that have come up. Uh, the news of the hour is that one of our partners, Mirko, uh, earlier this morning, uh, went ahead and pushed an update to Uroy. And uh, that update, for the first time ever, gives Cardano uh, support for a hardware wallet. Uh, so it's a Trezor wallet. It's uh, pretty cool. Uh, and what's really exciting to me and why I think this is such monumental news and why I'm making a big deal out of it is this is the first time in the history of the Cardano project where something of this magnitude has been done without any effort, uh, coordination, or input from IOHK. Uh, the Trezor integration that Amergo has done is 100% them. Uh, it's 100% their efforts, and uh, they've done a real great job with it. And uh, they'll make an announcement shortly uh, soon, I suspect today or early tomorrow, uh, and they have some videos and other cool things. But uh, from our perspective on the IOHK side, this is a major milestone because it's a resilience milestone. It's basically saying that third-party developers are building things in our ecosystem and they're just going ahead and doing it. They're not asking permission, they're not asking for input, uh, they're just working real hard to get these types of things done. The other thing that's exciting is that Ledger support is the number one requested feature we get from everybody in the forums. And uh, Trezor support, Ledger support, they're not much different from each other. Trezor came a little sooner because there was some great work that was done there by uh, Vacuum Labs and others. Uh, but Ledger is not too far behind. So given that we have support there, uh, support on Ledger should probably come in the next month or two at the latest on the Roy side. Now, on our side, on the Cardano side, uh, 2018 was all about learning about how to roll out a cryptocurrency for the exchanges, for the users, how to build a help desk, how to do a QA process, uh, and w what does it mean to actually have a cryptocurrency wallet in production uh, and people barking and yelling at you every day about various things that they'd like or things that aren't working well. Uh, now, as we move into 2019, we as an organization have gained an enormous amount of knowledge and experience and uh, capability, and we're going to start rolling that knowledge, expertise, and capability into our product portfolio. Uh, so in particular, in the next few quarters, uh, you're going to see Cardano Wallet, the reference wallet of the system, transform quite a bit. Uh, first, we'd like to have two implementations of Cardano Wallet's backend. So we right now have a Rust implementation, excuse, excuse me, a Haskell implementation, but we're also going to be rolling out a Rust implementation, and then the user can choose which code base that they want to use for the backend. Second, we're going to really double down on this whole concept of having an advanced user mode within the Cardano Wallet. Uh, so we're going to have a terminal. Uh, and that terminal is going to allow you to do things like manually construct a transaction, uh, manually do UTXO selection, uh, run scripts that you can write kind of like a shell script within the wallet to automate a lot of wallet tasks, as well as to directly interface with things like the database and um, directly interface with uh, the wallet itself. And eventually that terminal will be used to deploy smart contracts as well. So for the users of our testnet, if you've used Mallet, uh, to deploy co smart contracts to the KEVM and into Yella, a lot of those concepts and ideas that we have there will be taken and put into Cardano Wallet uh, for Plutus as well as the, eventually the sidechain connections that we have for Yella and for the KEVM. So it's going to be an advanced user mode. It's a high priority, and uh, now that we have a new wallet backend, it's something that we're going to be building our way towards a very systematic uh, effort, and there's a whole dedicated team. Another thing is that our wallet backend is getting decoupled. So... Uh, we've actually built it so that it's going to be in its own repo and it's going to be a standalone product. And that conceivably means that you can take that Haskell wallet back in and connect it to a different core. Our first experiment with that is going to be with the Rust Cardano client. So we'll take the new wallet layer, we'll connect it to the Rust client, and it should be able to connect to the Haskell client, the Rust client. But ultimately, other people can take that backend and they can use it for other products. And because it's been built in a very particular way, it may be abstracted to a point where you can use it for any UTXO wallet if you load a certain parameterization into it, meaning that you could conceivably, in a long arc, uh, use this as a Bitcoin wallet system or a Litecoin wallet system, in addition to being useful for Cardano and so forth. Um, we're also going to start putting a lot of resources into improving Haskell's portability. Uh, right now, Haskell works great uh, for certain infrastructure. If you're in the Linux world, uh, you know, huzzah. Uh, but if you're in the Windows world or the Mac world, things are a little harder. 
Uh, if you live in the browser, things are non-existent. There's things like GHCJS, uh, but unfortunately, it's just not a really good experience compared to things like ReasonML or ClojureScript. So uh, given that Plutus is embedded within Haskell, if we're going to have a good experience with people deploying Plutus scripts and running those using template Haskell on the client side in addition to the blockchain on the server, uh, we need to have a way of getting this into a browser. And there's two routes we can take. We can either go down the WebAssembly road and get a Haskell to WebAssembly uh, compiler ready to go and make that a good experience, similar to how we can do that with Rust, or we can put more money and get GHCJS to reach equivalency with things like ReasonML or um, other platforms that do that. Uh, so we're having a big internal discussion with our team. We're going to conduct a series of experiments. One of our partners, Tweak, uh, already has been doing pretty heavy lifting with WebAssembly. And we think within four to six months, um, if it's given some tender love and care, it can reach parity with uh, what it needs to, to be able to compile our Haskell code to run in the browser. Now, what does this mean for smart contracts and what does this mean for Cardano? It means all the Haskell code that we've written could conceivably be ported into a browser application similar to what we've done with Icarus, with Rust and JavaScript. It also means that when you write a Plutus-style smart contract, your development tools, your development environment, and even the DAP deployment environment could conceivably be 100% inside the browser or within Daedalus because Daedalus is built on top of Electron. Uh, so that's a high priority in addition to getting the terminal where it needs to go. In fact, so much so we're going to be hiring three full-time engineers to do nothing but work on either GHCJS or on WebAssembly. We're having an internal debate of the most efficient allocation of resources there. The good news is those projects are within half a year worth of effort. And so they should conclude right around the same time we start upgrading our system to include smart contracts. Uh, another thing uh, that was put on the back burner last year because we decided to completely rewrite core and completely rewrite the wallet backend is uh, multi-sig. And uh, multi-sig is making a comeback. Our partners keep requesting it. And we keep saying there's no good reason not to pursue it. Uh, so uh, we already have one pull request that was from, I think, April to May of last year where there was a pretty good design for multi-sig. But we chose not to pursue it because we were in the process of rebuilding everything. Now that major components have been reconstructed, uh, we're going to go ahead and restart the multi-sig project. So right after we start seeing uh, Ledger support and Trezor support is already now here with Uroi, uh, very short thereafter, we should have uh, a standard for multi-sig and we're gonna work with Amergo to make sure that that gets implemented properly. Uh, they have some more announcements that they're going to make about uh, their roadmap for 2019. I've seen it. It's a great roadmap. There's some really impressive, cool things. Uh, the other nice part about your role is the development team keeps growing. Um, we're going to start making contributions to it. We were trying to figure out whether it made sense to keep maintaining the Icarus code base or to retire that and move uh, our contributions to Uroi, but we're so impressed with what Sebastian and Nico and Emergo have been doing uh, that IOHK is going to start making code commits to Uroi. Uh, so we can hopefully double the size of that development team and we can very rapidly get wallet features out, but not just multi-sig and hardware support. These are fun, uh, but also features like a delegation center for Uroi so you can stake your coins right within the browser uh, and other such things. So that's going to be a nice open roadmap and uh, that's going to be exciting. So anyway, the good news, it's not super significant, uh, but it is a major milestone uh, to repeat, is the launch of Trezor support with uh, Uroi. And what's so exciting about it to me, again, is this concept that it was done 100% without IOHK engineers, IOHK input. It was just done by our partner. Um, the other thing is it's getting considerably easier day by day, week by week for third parties to start integrating Cardano support. Uh, so as we move out of Q1, uh, as we move through it, uh, we'll expect to see lots of third parties like Shapeshift and uh, Jax and others uh, start picking up Cardano and supporting Cardano because the implementation time and effort for that uh, is quite, uh, quite low compared to what it was in 2018. As 